Dobar dan svima. Zbog naših dragih gosti u predavanju će biti na engleskom. So, just another policy. Manners. Why we need that? Our dear internet is pretty chaotic here, as you can see. Our piece of this house is here. It's a neighboring part of the SOX, which is only one point in the internet in Serbia. Or if you look at uh, BGP play, it can be a little bit chaotic too. So how this work at all? Believe it or not, internet is based on goodwill. Goodwill of the operators to follow the recommendations and the rules. Our main routing protocol, which allow us to, to communicate at all, is BGP protocol version 4. And as the internet by itself, BGP v4 is also based on trust. Why I say that? Uh, all the announcements are without any validity check. Whatever you announce, your uh, neighbor will accept. Or to say, you, cannot, you can announce whatever you like. I can announce that I am the Google. Yeah, I am big Google. Or I am Facebook. Regarding the BGP, it's legal. You can do that. Your router is not only your router. BGP is the global protocol. So any mistakes in configuration will propagate all around the world. Misconfiguration typing will end up in India, in Australia, New Zealand, or whatever you like. So it's not only my part of the internet. BGP is the global one. And in the end, OK, I want to verify what I'm receiving from my neighbors. We do not have any valid resources for, uh, sources for validity check. Regarding BGP, BGP does not check anything. It just accept what you announced it. So how it works? Well, we all think it works perfect, but statistics, statistics said it's not really like that. Six months of suspicious activity based on uh, BGP stream data. As you can see, we have problems every day. And users typically do not see that. They say, oh, this provider, it's bad. He messed something. Uh, my internet is not working well. But if you are the operators, you know very well that uh, we have a lot of uh, problems in everyday life. What caused those problems? IP prefix hijack. From time to time, you have uh, providers that, uh, or to say, autonomous systems that announce prefixes that does not belong to them. As I said, I am the Google. Or that can be unintentionally. Or they announce prefixes with shorter IS path just to take the traffic over their network. Why they are doing that? Sometimes because of financial reason. If I put more traffic to my customers, they will pay more, more to me. So I have financial interest in that. Or I, I like to sniff a little bit of that traffic. I like to see what are they doing? What are they exchanging? And if the traffic is going over my network, I can do it with it whatever I, I like. Except it is encrypted. But not only encrypted, it should be encrypted with the proper algorithms. If you use a weak encryption, it's like you are not encrypting at all. What else can be the problem? Uh, our traffic can end up on the wrong place. So it is black hole. It just disappear somewhere. We can have denial of service because the traffic is not routed properly. Or we can have traffic intercepting, something like this. And the traffic can be modified, sniffed, or whatever we do with it. Those problems can be intentionally. Unintentionally, we can have root leakage. Uh, 
Again, we are speaking about uh, misconfigurations and traffic is routing on the wrong direction, making routing loops or uh, increased lat latency jitter, so the service is not operating very well. What the problem is real? We cannot control how our upstream providers is handling our prefixes. We just announce the prefixes and have a good will that they will properly route, uh, announce that further and route the traffic. One of the big problems today is ad IP address spoofing, uh, mainly used for denial of service attacks, where you can spoof the address or source address of your packets, which then makes some problems in the network. I can protect myself. I have enough knowledge to properly configure my router. Wrong. You are just part of the big internet. You are not alone. So whatever you do, you cannot prevent some mistakes from the uh, other operators or mistakes from those funny guys, which knows a lot about how internet is functioning and knows a lot how to compromise it. How to protect ourselves? We need joint action of all internet providers and all IXPs to protect this uh, very sensitive infrastructure. And manners is uh, one way of doing that. So it's not just another policy invented by some crazy scientists to make li our life more complicated. So what is defined by manners? Manners define baseline security effort uh, to protect this infrastructure to work correctly. First of all, it's filtering. With filtering, we ensure the correctness of your own announcement and of announcements from your customers to adjacent networks with prefixes and ISPAT granularity. We must control uh, what we announce to our neighbors and what we accept from our neighbors. We must have some database where it is documented what is uh, regular or what is not regular. Second thing is anti-spoofing, which is mainly uh, implemented at the edge of the network, where uh, we should validate the source addresses of the traffic to be sure that this traffic is a regular traffic from the point of addressing space. Of course, we need coordination if I have a problem, I can locate it on ASN numbers and uh, uh, routing table. But I need the contact, proper contact at that point uh, to ask for intervention. I cannot change the router of my provider. I can do the, that only on my router. And then at the end, we need global validation. Or our, our data should be published so other can validate routing information to be sure that this address prefix is regularly origin in that IS numbers. Regarding root filtering, what we can do? First of all, all BGP sessions should have import filters. Forget about open internet on this stage we must control what is announcing to us. Not to uh, isolate someone, but to be sure that our neighbor will announce to us uh, the regular routing prefixes. And those filters should be in accordance with data in internet routing registers. Internet routing registers are the places where we can find the valid data about the route prefixes and IS numbers and routing policies. Who is feeling those data? We, we are. So if you are, want to change something to establish new link, we should update the data in IRR or all other providers will not be in position to properly filter the traffic and will have a problem. When we are talking about filtering, it must be based on IS number and on prefixes, not only one or the second one.
because both data are important for the proper functioning of the internet. Anti-spoofing, you know very well that uh, one of the basic hackers attacks are based on uh, spoofing the source the addresses of the traffic. So operators should check all incoming traffic from the source of, uh, from the end users. And this is the best place to do that anti-spoofing traffic. It's pretty difficult to do that on the IXP where you have hundreds of gigabits of traffic, but at the edge of the network, it's the right place to do this. A reverse path forwarding is one of the functions which is also a little bit problematic to be checked on IXP, but uh, the I, uh, ISP uh, operators are the, uh, the right guys to do that and to verify that the routing is done in the proper way. If I don't have the proper contact of some operator in the internet or provider, I cannot solve the problem. You probably know that from time to time you got the complaints from your end users that uh, they cannot see something, that they cannot access to some sites, and at the end you figure out that the problem is that site. They messed something in the routing. What can you do? You cannot, you cannot nothing uh, without the cooperation of uh, the owner of that site. So we need the strong coordination between all of us to keep our internet working in everyday life. We all know that from time to time we do not want to share all the data we have, all the information about our routing policy, but it is not possible to hide that information. We will see, you can use this trace route and you will see that the traffic is not going that way, it's going the other way. So network operators should have public documented routing policy, uh, as I said, just as a tool for keep uh, the routing process uh, secure. What we have here in Serbia, I cannot speak about uh, big service providers, but uh, regarding SOX, we are trying to be compliant with Manners recommendations. Uh, SOX is filtering all BGP announcements and all uh, BGP import in SOX routing table in accordance with uh, the data we have in the right RRR data. Since we are a layer two network, we do not filter traffic. We do not filter uh, IP packets. We are just handling the routing announcement from our customers. We have plans to be fully compliant with Manners recommendation, but we'll see when we'll have enough technical resources to fulfill all those requirements. All the information regarding Manners initiative you can find on the, their websites. Uh, they have two official documents. It's mutually agreed norms for routing security, published in September 2016, and Manners Implementation Guide version 1.0, published in January 2017. You can also find the Manners Project Study Report, uh, written by ISOC, and published in August 2017. As you can see, all the documents are pretty fresh and uh, that's the initiative that we, are, we all should support to make our internet better place to live and work. Thank you. Kevin, it's your turn. First of all, I'm Kevin Maynell, so I'm working for the uh, Internet Society. Um, and I'm working with Andre Robchevsky, who is um, the, the, the project officer who's um, uh, should we say, uh, guiding or leading this uh, initiative. Um, so we'd like to sort of, we'd like to point out really that we, this is not specifically an internet society, an uh, internet society activity. Um, we, we'd like to see this as a general community activity. It may be being supported and we're uh, supported and we're providing some resources uh, for, uh, for this activity, but uh, we very much see this as something that should be uh, coming from the community and led by the community. 
Um, so some of these slides um, actually have uh, actually duplicates of um, NANAD, so I'm not going to go through all of those, but the complete th slide deck will be uh, available online uh, if you want to go through that uh, uh, later. Um, so that will be on our uh, Deploy360 website um, that Megan posted the URL of um, earlier. But yeah, just to sort of, you know, um, um, to reiterate, um, that there's something like 60,000 um, uh, autonomous networks um, on the internet and they're using BGP to exchange uh, inf information on how to reach each other and to send data between each other. Um, but as Nenad pointed out, it's entirely built on trust this system um, and that this is a sort of chain of trust that's you know, very much built up over uh, yeah, probably nearly 30 years now. Um, but it, it's a system that's, you know, nowadays we're seeing more and more problems and more and more incidents um, uh, occurring. And sort of really came to the fore in 2008 when there was uh, um, uh, an incident with, in Pakistan where there was an attempt to um, uh, divert YouTube for various reasons, uh, but that inadvertently took off a large, uh, inadvertently took a large section of the internet um, um, down. Uh, there was another big incident um, in China, I think 2010, around that time, uh, which also took a large uh, chunk of the internet offline. And then actually recently with the, uh, Iran Telecom, um, uh, for various uh, uh, censorship reasons, they were looking to uh, divert traffic. Um, and um, um, the unfortunate consequences, it took down a lot of um, uh, networks in the vicinity um, of Iran, um, not least because Iran is also a transit um, uh, a transit provider for a number of other countries in that region. So this is a problem. This is a real problem. I think that's the point to make. You you can find um, um, incidents going on every day, uh, every year of every sorry every day of every year, um, and some of some of these have become you know, quite well publicised, but. That there's a lot that isn't publicised, it, but it's still happening. So my colleague Aftab in um, the Asia Pacific Bureau actually did a, a bit of a survey of this, um, and this is just one month in the Asia Pacific region. Um, obviously, it's not Europe, but I think it illustrates things very well. So, for example, there were um, in just one month there were 80 around 80 um, root leaks or hijacks just in that region alone. Um, there were about 60 incidents with um, uh, Bogon AS numbers um, and around 50 incidents with um, Bogon prefixes, ju just in one month, that is. So Nenad has already talked about you know, what, what, so what the problems are and what some of, these, some of the things that could be done to, 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 to solve these problems, so I don't want to go into to detail with that. Um, but what it... I think it, it's again worth re-emphasizing the fact that from the routing perspective, securing your own network um, doesn't necessarily make it more secure. It is essentially in someone else's hands, um, but what people that, pra that, that uh, practice, um, uh, the good, uh, practice the good practices in effect, um, the better the security of the internet um, will be. So really Manners is trying to establish um, an indus industry supported cultural norm. Um, so follow these practices, um, provide this, uh, implement this good, these good practices um, and, and the collective, the collaborative um, impact will be, will be greater. So um, again, there's these four concrete actions and then I went through those in, in, in a lot of detail and very well, um, so it doesn't warrant going through these uh, in detail again. Um, but the point, another point to make is that you know this is a this should be considered a sort of absolute minimum that operators should consider, um, and it's something that can be done at, at minimal cost and, and with low risk. Um, but the the, the, co you know, the collective effect is as more op more uh, operators implement manners, um, the fewer routing incidents um, we should see, and the, the smaller the the, the the impact and the scope of these. Um, it's certainly not a complete solution to the internet routing, routing issues, but it is you know, a step that we can take in that direction. 
So really, what's the, the business case for, for, for Manos? I mean, we can stand up here and we can talk about it and say this is a good thing and you should implement this, but you know, are there real business reasons for, for doing this? So ISOC engaged um, a company called uh, uh, 451 Research to uh, interview and survey uh, a number of uh, commercial operators to try to understand you know, what, what, what are the sort of driving forces uh, behind this. So this was a questionnaire-based study, um, and it targeted um, a number of uh, different demographics. Um, so around 250 questionnaires, um, these were targeting companies with around 1,000 employees, at, at least 1,000 employees. Um, they were primarily in North America, but I would say pretty much the, the, the outcomes are, would probably have a, a, a common impact uh, around the world. So what we found is, you know, security is vital for enterprises. Um, there isn't a lot of awareness of manners at the moment or even some of the manners concepts, which is one of the reasons we're doing this. Um, but they do have a high desire for, uh, for improving security. Um, but when manners was explained, um, you know, enterprises, enterprises said, well, yeah, they're willing to put manners compliance into their, um, their RFPs. Um, and also require that of their, of their service providers. So for service providers, Manners is adding some value or can add some value. Um, and, and it can you know, help, help differentiate service providers from their competitors. So, you know, if you're, you can verifiably say you're performing these practices, uh, that may distinguish, give you a bit of a competitive advantage over others that aren't doing that. Um, but then also there's, you know, they can also, Service providers can also provide um, uh, some, possibly provide some additional revenue streams based on things like information security feeds and other services that, that uh, may be associated with this. Um, so, you know, particularly these are the sort of range of concerns um, uh, that, that uh, the enterprises will have, um, something that Manners can help with. So, you know, traffic hijacking is pretty much it's very high up there in the list of concerns. But you know, all of the other things that Manners uh, is also looking to um, address, you know, they are definitely of a high concern um, across the board uh, amongst um, enterprises. So, um, and so we had to sort of try to work out, well, you know, how, how, how much would they uh, go for, how much would an enterprise go for a, a Manners compliant um, um, uh, service provider. We found that you know, around 13% would act actively choose a managed compliant uh, provider. But actually, even if they weren't specifically supporting manners, um, there was still a high premium on, on uh, performing the, 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 the manners uh, actions. Um, from the service provider point of view, um, the um, most providers said, or there's a large uh, percentage of providers said that they, they would um, implement manners um, for reasons just to be more secure or even for regulatory compliance if that became an issue. Um, but also, they would also, they were also willing to do that um, to be good citizens and to increase efficiency. So, you know, at the moment, there, is, there are no sort of regulatory reasons to, uh, or no, no regulatory mandates to, to implement these, these routing practices. Um, but you know, we've had over 100 sign-ups to Manners, and that's just simply because um, ISPs are interested in being uh, a good internet citizens. Um, but again, you know, if enterprises are, uh, I, 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 I would like to support this, um, you know, by asking for Manners, it does signal that you, can, um, uh, you should care and invest in security matters. Um, it's... Uh, well, will help with increasing operational efficiency. So larger enterprises with peering arrangements um, that, that do involve BGP, um, they can incorporate these um, actions into, uh, in, into their operations and that will improve their um, oper organizational security uh, posture. Um, so really sort of covered why service providers should, one of the reasons why service providers should uh, join Manners and I think they've had made a good points uh, behind that. Um, but if you are interested in doing this, um, 
you know, it, it does make some statements um, that you, are, you do care about rising security, um, you're prepared to spend some resources on this, and you are actually prepared to be held accountable by the, the, um, the, the global internet routing community. Um, the, the website, the, the resources uh, are available on the MANUS website, but um, I would point out that there is, there are some, uh, there is some documentation um, that, that can help, uh, help you implement the, the, these actions. Um, so these are based on, uh, based on the best current operational practices um, deployed by network operators around the world. Um, this document started out, we intended it to be a very simple document initially. Um, it ended up being 50 pages, but it is quite a comprehensive document. So for each of the four actions you can go through, uh, and you can find detailed information about how, how this can be implemented. So um, some of the next steps um, are uh, managed training and certification. Um, so we already mentioned that, that the implementation guide. But we're also developing some training modules to help um, users and uh, operators go through uh, some of the actions um, in a more interactive uh, way. So that, that's being worked on at the moment and should be, well, they have, have actually been, I think they're actually in test phase at the moment, but um, they should be available uh, shortly. Um, and then we're looking at uh, uh, developing a hands-on lab uh, looking towards a sort of uh, uh, manner certification process, but that's a little bit further ahead. So for more information, um, go to the manners website. Um, that, if there's any questions on that, um, from myself or from Nenad, I'm happy to uh, answer those. Oh. So, there's, there's, there's a question there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gavin. I just wanted you to give us some kind of uh, notion, not how long is a piece of string, but if a network operator in Serbia wants to implement manners, is there any uh, an indication of resources, staff, you know, what do you need <laughs> for the business case? Uh, are there any uh, uh, research data on that? Thank you. Um, I do you want to answer that question? Because you've, 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 you've done it, right? So maybe you... Well, <clears throat> you just need the time. Uh, because uh, we are talking about uh, filtering uh, of, uh, routing announcements and every router has uh, that functionality inside. So you just need to change your procedures and implement uh, filtering uh, of the announcement based on the information that you can collect on internet routing registers. Uh, regarding uh, anti-spoofing protection, uh, there, there you should have a little bit of technical resources for that. Your router should be capable to do that. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, all our uh, ISPs already have uh, proper router for that. So as I said, I think it's only a question of uh, decision and uh, time for implementing the manners uh, recommendations. So I would say, I mean, a number of these things are a good practice anyway that probably should be being performed as, as part of the sort of network operations. So I, I think it is a little bit of a how long is a piece of string question. Um, it, it could be very minimal amount or it could be a lot depending on, on, on where you are in, the, uh, in, your, in your practices. Yes. Zoran Perović, Serbian Open Exchange. Is there any global percentage on the acceptance of, uh, of manners? Since this is rather young, uh, young initiative, right? young project, uh, do you have something like 12% success rate, 20, 40, 80? You mean in terms of network signing up to manners? Of course. Um, so I think there's about 100 AS numbers. Uh, 
maybe a little bit more than 100 um, out of 60,000. So that gives you an idea. So it, the percentage is quite low, but I think the important point to make is, and, and this was brought home quite clearly uh, when we did an ION in South Africa uh, about a couple of months ago, is that num quite a lot of operators are following some of these practices anyway. Um, so in South Africa, there's, we only had about three operators that were actually signed up to Manners, actually signed up. But then in that room, there were about 20 uh, said, yeah, but we're following these practices. We may not be actually signed up. So probably the, the, the percentage in practices is actually quite a bit higher um, than than actually would be listed on the website. Okay, uh, Jan George, Internet Society. Actually, to your point, um, one interesting thing happened in, 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 in Africa, Liquid Telecom, <laughs> the Pan-African network operator. Actually, they didn't sign up to Manners as such because they say we are buying, um, uh, we are um, uh, actually buying new operators um, every month uh, in Africa and we don't know if they are manners compliant so we cannot sign up as as the whole operator to it but what they did was they put um, manners principle in their peering agreements so whoever wants to peer with them needs to sort of like satisfy the the the, the manners principles and not do crazy things in their networks. Otherwise, they can de-peer them. And I think this is, this is a good usage uh, of, of the manners. You put them in, in the peering policy, and then if people don't obey manners, so that means that you're obeying manners, and also all your peers all of a sudden need to obey manners. So this is a good amplification of, of, of the thing. Small print. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that we, we would say, you know, obviously we would like, well, the Manners community would like people to sign up, you know, actually sign up to Manners, but we would like more for people to actually follow the principles, even if they're not signing up to Manners. So, you know, that's also being a good uh, internet neighbor as well. So, you know, I think that's an the, the important point to make. Okay.